Y'all help me in just welcoming Pastor and Lady J to the stage, Lateris R. Whitfield to the stage. Could you have achieved all that you've achieved without her? No, I, th I think, you know, the Lord didn't give Adam a rack of ribs. He gave him one rib. And I believe that he's teaching a principle that Eve is an essential collaborator. And, and I, I, I think there's a value that she brings to the table that yes. I don't have. Early on in the marriage, I underutilized my essential collaborator because of insecurity. Mm -hmm. I've been able to accomplish so much more. There you go, babe. <laughs> so much more because I'm in partnership mm -hmm. with somebody who's not impotent. Now you'll catch that when you get home. <laughs> because the assignment is to multiply. That's right. But in order to multiply, you got to be connected to someone who is healthy. And so I've been able to bear fruit, and we've been able, children and grandkids and church, and she getting ready to launch a business, and we got peace. Yeah. Yeah. And we got joy. So, uh, no. Every second that escapes without you here with me Keeps my heart anticipating till I finally see you When I made my vows, I told God that I was going to take care of this gift All my life I've been waiting for you Girl, you know I've been praying for you been writing these love letters to you. So I fight for that future in the present. That's you know what I'm saying? That was good. Congratulations to the ones who found love for the whole band. New beginnings from heaven above. I await my future wifey. I pray that it won't be too long. Too long. This is going to be an amazing, amazing episode. This is a season where we talk about relationships and lasting and thriving love. And so today's episode, I have a dynamic couple, a couple that believes in keeping it lit. On the podcast, we say keeping it lit is living intentionally and transparently. And so after talking to this dynamic couple, uh, I said, y'all are the epitome of keeping it lit. <laughs> so without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, Pastor J and Lady J, yes. Paris Johnson and Torsha Johnson, y'all. Thank you, man. Man, listen, man, we here. We in yeah. this thing now. We here. All right. Listen, uh, what I love about y'all, we did a pre-interview and uh, y'all just an open book, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I said that is missing in the body of Christ, especially when you see pastors and leaders, oftentimes they're not vulnerable and open and transparent about some of the stuff that they go through. And so even when I was going through my, my issues in my marriage, when I was married eight years ago, um, I was married for almost 10 years and I was wanting somebody that I could find reference to what I was going through. And I said, I'm sitting here in church every Sunday and I'm seeing these pastors on stage and I'm wondering, are they going through some of the stuff that I'm going through? How many of y'all have felt that? Felt like you've been going through it all by yourself. And so I said that maybe I'm just a heathen or something because if, <laughs> if I'm the only one going through it and you know if nobody else is going through it, then something must be wrong with me. <laughs> but the more I started doing this podcast, I realized that we all go through relationship issues and uh, we're all broken people trying to have a healed marriage. And so um, we're going to deep dive into this thing right now. Mm. Oh, yeah. So here we go. <laughs> so let, 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 let's unpack this. How did y'all meet? Let's start off with you, uh, Pastor Jay. Is it the church version or the... I want the real version. I don't want the church version. I want the unsanctified version. Okay, yeah, let me, yeah, the unsanct... So, um, Mount Hoare Missionary Baptist Church, you know, and so uh, that's, that's where I grew up. That's uh, uh, Fourth Ward in Houston, Texas. Oh, yeah. And um, that's where I got saved. And I preached my first sermon. 
you know, met the Lord, got saved, preached the first sermon. And in, in those days, you have your trial message. I had on a white suit, man. I was clean. Uh, I'm clean. That white suit, uh, a river on this side because we wore parts. Oh, yeah, I yeah. A, I got a big river right here. Uh -huh. And I preached my first sermon. It's packed. Mm -hmm. The formula of life. How old were you then? Um, what, 23? 20. Okay. I was 20. 20. I was 20 years of age. Yeah. And after you preach, they said, Doc, they come shake your hand. And I'm trying to stay in the holy of holy. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Really trying to stay spiritual. Amen. Uh, but the enemy brought me out. Uh-huh, right? uh-huh. And she walks up with a blue silk dress on. You still remember what she had on? Blue silk dress, Doc. <laughs> and she said, great message, pastor. <laughs> I didn't say that. You weren't even a pastor yet. <laughs> but you seen the feature, amen. <laughs> she was like... Great, great message. Shook my hand, all that kind of stuff. And she shook it. She held it. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of more folk. You know, I had to shake yeah. the hands. And I wanted to, you know, the next person. But when she walked away, I... You had to watch her walk away. You watched her walk away. I ain't gonna lie. I looked at uh -huh, it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. In the church. I looked church at house. it in the church. Amen. So that... Yeah, yeah. And the, and the next day we had a revival. Yep. And, um, yeah, I met her. <laughs> Rest is history, 30 years. 30 years later. Lady J. <laughs> is, that, is that how it went down? That's pretty much how it went down, except, except for the fact some of it was a little bit exaggerated. <laughs> um, I did. I had on a royal blue silk dress, and um, I did. I was very intentional about going to greet him because he actually did a really good job with his first sermon. So it was, it, was, it was an honest, you know, just acknowledgement and, you know, offering words of encouragement uh, to him. And when I went and approached him, I wanted to meet him because the backstory before meeting him, I received a graduation picture because he had graduated in the year of 91. And so when I saw the picture on my grandmother's dining room uh, table, I said, who is that? Yeah. He had this yeah. nice smile. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I was like, who is that? And so she was like, you know who that is. That's Gwen's boy. I was like, no, I don't. Who is Gwen? <laughs> <laughs> and so when I found out he was preaching his first sermon, I was there, and I did go greet him. So that's true. So let me ask you this, Lady J. Mm -hmm. You said you saw the picture. Yes. What was you thinking when you saw the picture? You would uh. go there. You would. <laughs> Um, so I was just thinking, you know, it's someone I would like to meet. Yeah. Someone you would Simply like to put, meet. I would she like never to told me that. Uh -huh. You didn't tell me That's that. That's what happens. We like to unpack things on the Dear Future Piper <laughs> podcast. Because, you know, I'm going to ask the question that everybody want to know. <laughs> she, she just told me about the teeth. She never told me that she wanted yeah, to Yeah, he had a beautiful smile. And I wanted to, you know, meet him. Because, listen, at our church, it was only a handful of young adults anyway, right? Right. So if you meet the guy who's returning back to church, that's a whole other story. But returning back to church, and now you're going to see him, you just want to introduce yourself and be like, okay, hey. And so when you walked up to him after the service to greet him. Yes. Were you positioning yourself or were you just saying hello? I was just saying hello. How many of y'all believe that? How many of y'all believe that? I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't think nobody it in was this a strategy, sanctuary God. believes <laughs> a strategy. that no. you were just saying hello. You I done was looked really at the picture, <laughs> then you done positioned yourself to say hello. The picture, come on, man. Yeah. I was allowing the Lord to use me. I know, uh huh. <laughs> That's all. I mean, you know, I was at the right place at the right time. So I was just listening. And wearing the right dress in the right way. You see that? Hey, man. Because he on. still remember that dress. So the that dress. dress the silk dress. dress. That dress needs to be framed or something. Yeah, <laughs> from Mervyn. All the women need to come Mervyn. by and touch it like the little brick on Apollo or something for, for anointing or something because wow. that dress is still long lasting in his long memory. Long lasting, yes. <laughs> My, our children's yeah. children's children be talking about that blue dress. They're going to talk about that blue dress. Yes. And so, how did it transition from a hello and a little meet and greet after service to dating? 
Yeah, well, the next day, as he stated, was uh, the youth revival. And so he walked up with his mom. I was already there uh, having a conversation with my cousin. And so I never formally met him, even though I greeted him the night before for his first sermon. So my cousin, who's around his age, actually formally introduced us that day. And uh, he was late to church. He was walking up with his mom. <laughs> and, and I was standing there. And so he introduced us. And he was like, this is my cousin. And he was like, OK, hey. And so then we just hung together with that little group of young adults. And then so, Pastor Jay, what were you thinking? You know, when you saw her, what were you thinking? Were you thinking, oh, she's just a cute woman? Are you saying this is somebody I want to date or get to know? Um, what was your thought process? I'm going after that. I'm going to get that. I'm going I'm, 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 <laughs> Yeah, we get that. You was on a mission. You was yeah. on a mission at the very beginning. Mission Wait, impossible. Wait, hold. May, mission I, may I say something, though? Not Lincoln. get, but get. But get. We, no. Not get. <laughs> but, no. but get. You got to interpret that. <laughs> Not get, but get. But get, yeah, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to get that, yeah. I'm going to yeah. get that. Yeah, I found out afterwards, though, when he preached his first sermon, like he said, it was a packed house. His, his girlfriend, was it girlfriend or ex-girlfriend was actually there? Uh-oh, uh-oh. I mean, we talking uh -oh. about everything, yeah, we, right? Yeah, I mean, we might as well, Lady J. You said, yo. We were in transition. <laughs> oh, okay. Good, good she response. was trying to hold on. Oh. She was trying to hold on. But the season was up. The season was up. That's all. That's all. <laughs> she was just she was she was just trying to hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was trying to move on. Move on. Oh, okay. <laughs> to a higher dimension. <laughs> a higher dimension. <laughs> that's all that yeah, I'm trying to move on. Mm. Yeah. That's good. I like it. Oh my God! <laughs> you're trying to move on to a high dimension. High dimension. Amen. Amen. Well, high in Jesus. And then, and then, so y'all were hanging her out in a in a small group, yeah. and then, um, how did that start transitioning? Did, you know, you had a mission. You was on Mission Possible, uh, <laughs> Pastor Jay, and um, were there interests? Because you haven't expressed yet that you had interest in old oh, Terrence over here. Did you have interest? Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. You know, I had um, ended a relationship, and I actually, you know, had talked to the Lord one night, and I was like, you know, I'm really done. Kind of like what Dr. Steph said. Like, I'm done with all these relationships. Like, I need to focus. And Lord, if he's not a godly man, like, I don't, I don't want to waste no more time. So I'm not interested in just anybody. And so, yeah, when I, when I saw him, now, of course, you know, the whole preacher thing, and I want to make sure everybody understands, I was not looking for a preacher, let alone a pastor. Like, that was not on my list. Right. But I did request a godly man. So, yeah. Um, yeah. one that had a real relationship with the Lord. Amen. And so, he just so happened, you know, to be a preacher. But, yeah, so I was interested in getting to know him because I was attracted to him. And how old were you then? Oh, yeah, I was young. What was I? I think I was like 18 or 19. 18, 19, you had yeah. given up on relationships that early? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. I was done. I was like, 18, really? 19, I'm, yeah. I'm done with this. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was done. What had you been through at 18 and 19? <laughs> a lot. That you had given up on Listen. relationships. <laughs> I'll write a book about it. Y'all can read that later. But just too much, actually, where I wanted to be done. Um, and it was only a few real relationships because right. I grew up in the church. I couldn't just bring any guy home. So it was only a couple. But I was done. Mm -hmm. And so um, when did you ask her on the first date? Um, yeah. Or were y'all even allowed to date back then? Was she even allowed to date? Come on, Doc. I was, I mean, it's, it, I was the the... The guy, I was the young, I was the young adult guy at the church. You, you with me? The it guy. Yeah, I was the it guy, you know, <laughs> there. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm about to get that, you know. <laughs> so the first date, you know, we thought about it. I strategized. And um, want to roll out the red carpet. Yeah. I want it to be an amazing experience. Here we go. So I took her to church. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle was preaching Tim Glenn. 
and I took her to a revival. Um, yeah. uh, it was about 10 people in there. Mm. <laughs> and we left there and went to Whataburger. We did. And, and she had on black and yellow. Your memory. You be remembering these clothes, yeah. don't you? Because I'm trying to get some. <laughs> Come on, man. Wow. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> black and yellow. So, yeah, it's attention. I'm paying attention to the details. To the details. All that yes. kind of stuff. I remember that. Remember how her hair was, she had her hair in a little, 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 little what's that little body? Oh, little, French little, roll? Yeah, the little French roll. Oh. Yeah, and, and she got that Indian in her, Comanche. Com <laughs> and so her hair all waving stuff, and I'm about to get that. And so, wow. uh, <laughs> black and yellow. Now I'm broke. Yeah. yeah. So we, we went to Whataburger. Uh-huh. And uh, went to Whataburger, pulled up. Uh, Brizzardi, yeah. you know, that's Fifth Ward, that's Acres Home. No, that's Studiwood. Studiwood, got a kiss that night. You got a kiss? Yeah. On, on a Whataburger on. meal, you got a kiss. On a Whataburger. See, I be trying to tell road, people they can't talk about this. <laughs> Come on, Cheesecake man. factory and all this, talk about, don't cheesecake factor me. Let me tell you something, there's so many people, and when you start talking about real relationships, how they start, it ain't about these five-star restaurants. Come on, man. It's about relatability, having real conversation. Come on, that's real it. Real genuine connection and showing up authentic. That's and right. And one more. Remember the blue dress. Oh, and remember the blue Come dress. On, you got to be and yellow. attention, Doc. Yes, yes. And remembering the details. Yes. That's it, man. And so I can just imagine you at that time, you know, paying attention to her every mood. Yeah. And, and every move that she made, and you're regurgitating that to her. And she's like, oh, he's been very attentive, you know. And uh, what made you kiss him that night? Um. I got to ask her. I know you the man. I know you the man, Pastor Jay. But I want to hear how, what she thought okay, cool. in the process. Yeah. You know, I mean, definitely, I was like, since he, you know, is looking like, the, a person of interest at this point that I would really like to get a to know. A person of interest. A um, person of interest. He leaned in. Sound like a police investigation. <laughs> a person of interest. Girl, you know you was feeling him. Just say because he was fine. Come on, he man. Was fine. Yeah, I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm talk to him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kiss him. Okay. Yeah. I and she said I, I could kiss. And you said I could kiss. No, you said I could kiss. It was mutual. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it was so weird because yeah. after it happened, he was looking. I was like, "Why are you looking like that?" He was like, "Cause you can kiss." Well, ex <laughs> well, exfoliated lips. I mean, that was important. The lips were soft. He said exfoliated lips. Should have yeah, known. Not no hard lips. Yeah. 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 Oh God. So that was big for me. Like, Why? Like hygiene. Come on, man. That's huge. <laughs> So you so, thought of that? You thought of all of that? Man, yes. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. Yes, me. that's important. Yeah, so important. I can't hold my breath and kiss. No. No, sir. So I grew up, hygiene's very important. Oh. So she clean, mm -hmm. you know, teeth white. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, look gloss on. <laughs> Ain't doing too much. So those things important. Those things important. I think God works in the ram, <laughs> the concentric circle of attraction. <laughs> I just believe that. And so at that time, you know, you were a young man. Did you desire marriage at that time? Um, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think I was ready for marriage. Wasn't ready to be a husband. Mm. I didn't know nothing about that. Yeah. And I think this, we struggle... We're trying to build a marriage without a blueprint, got a brochure, but no blueprint. Yeah. I think that's kind of where I was. Like, you yeah. said with a brochure, but no blueprint. Yeah, like you got inspiration, but you don't have no how to. So I was like, yeah, I want this idea. I'm a preacher mm -hmm. and got to have your first lady, right? You got to have your first lady. So I wanted the idea of marriage, but I wasn't ready to be a husband. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we had some issues. I mean, honestly, we were so young, yeah, right? right? And so you didn't share, but you, you prayed and you said the next woman you meet, 
you wanted that to be your wife, didn't you? Yeah, that's the way I prayed. I asked the Lord. You actually prayed that, that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know that at the time, you know, but I had my list and what I was considering as far as a husband. But we were young. Yeah. You know, really young to be thinking about marriage and stuff like that. But when we looked in our environment, like a lot of the marriages happened, they were young. Yeah. Right? yeah. So that wasn't unusual for us. Yeah. Um, and what do you think that the church failed at during that time? Because you said something profound. You know, um, a lot of times in the church, we advertise marriage, but we don't, you know, we don't give the blueprint. You know, we say it's better to marry than to burn, yeah. you know, and we say stuff like that. So it's like, well, I'm, I'm lustful right now. So let me just go ahead and get married. Yeah. And you see those marriages weren't, you know, sustainable. Yeah. And so when you look back at that, what do you, being a pastor now, what do, when you look back at that, hindsight being 2020, what do you wish was better taught during that time? When you got married and what you needed at that young age? Yeah. Um, a guide. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, and when I speak about it, you know, I think about this whole idea of I'm trying to get over this creek. Well, I'm, how I'm going to get over the creek? That's difficult. But if somebody puts some rocks yeah. for me to step on, now I have a, a framework. And yes. I think initially it was more guesswork. Mm -hmm. No framework, which created a lot of hard work. A I'm preaching a little bit. Yeah, you're preaching. Yeah, you are. You're preaching. <laughs> you're preaching. But I think if you have a guide, and when I speak of a guide, somebody who have empathy and authority. Mm -hmm. And I think empathy is I feel you, I've been there, yes. I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. But authority, I got through mistakes. Mm -hmm. I was able to get over the creek. And I think if you can, if I had been taught on how to identify a guide, and then not only a guide, but submit and listen to them. Because you know when you're young, you think you know everything. You think you know everything. Yeah. yeah. So I think if I had a, a guide, uh, it, it would have been a lot easier. It would have been better. Mm -hmm. Lady J, mm -hmm. what were you taught as a young woman about marriage or not taught? Yeah, so I mean, I wasn't taught how to be a wife. Yeah. Um, you know, you saw marriages within the family or even within the church where couples stay together, but they, they never looked happy. Exactly. There was no joy, you know, within the relationship. Um, but there was some sense of we're going to stay together. Yep. And I didn't want that. I didn't want that for me. And so I think. I learned mainly what not to do by looking at a lot of relationships and how they were working. But what happened over time in our marriage, because we didn't know what to do, I mean, our relationship suffered as well. Just not having the tools and not having a guide and someone to instruct us. And so I, I wanted to have, you know, just a voice of reason, a woman who yeah. could bring wisdom, you know, just to offer when it came to, number one, marrying that young. Yeah. Like, you know, somebody come and saying, baby, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, why are you getting married at this age? Do you but, think there's a such thing as being too young to get married? Yes, I do. So do you think that um, it's not based on maturity? You just feel like it's an age, like what age is, do you think is the healthier age to get married? Man, listen, we... Somebody said 30s? Y'all said 30s? Well, you know, the frontal lobe is, is developed. not developed. So your decision-making, just your choices when it comes to what marriage is, I think you can do your very best to teach someone all of those things. But at some point, you have to be at a place where you can accept it right. and apply it. And if that doesn't happen, then I think... You know, you grow up, but you, you just, you, you grow old, but you don't. Don't grow up. And I think with that marriage thing, just with the church thing, you yeah. know, I was, you know, with the school in Nashville under uh, Dr. Uh, Joseph Walker. I was working with him out there uh, as a volunteer. He couldn't pay me that then. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a volunteer working with his ministry. <laughs> And uh, I was his armor bearer. I carried yeah. a bag. I drove for him and brought him water and everything. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm getting ready to go back to school. Mm -hmm. We live in 1310 Ken Forest. Missouri I'm, City. Missouri City. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go back to school. And she comes to say goodbye. She had on white shorts. <laughs> Blue you know, dress. I'm going to write a whole wardrobe, book on you know, the blue dress. Wardrobe. Get on white shorts. Get on white shorts. And uh, it didn't go well for me in the Holy Ghost. 
<laughs> that day. Cause, Cause I told you I was trying to get that. Yeah. And yeah. the enemy got in and tricked me. <laughs> and my mama left the house that yeah. day. Yeah. And um, paint the pictures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I get back to school, and I mean the church I was at Mount Zion. I mean it went from 100 members to 10,000, and it, we, uh, 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 I gets the call. I'm pregnant. From who? <laughs> The audacity. You didn't hit her. You didn't hit her with the from who, did you? <laughs> yes. The audacity. I'm going to call you Pastor Jay. I'm going to call you who, Terrence. Who? You said who? <laughs> who is that? Who? I'm oh, trying. Well. I'm serving the Lord. I'm trying to hold it. Hold it. I'm working with my bishop up here. You wasn't serving the Lord that day. If it, you're right. <laughs> you were serving something else. And you know, if he wasn't so That's busy it. trying to get it, <laughs> he, he would have known it wasn't him. Yeah. yeah. But I was trying to get it. You gave it. So I it did. Was, I gave it. It was a mutual. I submitted mutual. way too was, early. Yeah. It was mutual. But here's the thing. Like, I made, I made straight Fs that semester. <laughs> Oh, it was a rough. It was rough, man. I was struggling like baby, that kind of thing. And here's the thing: remember, I grew up Baptist church. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you gotta get married. Yeah. Or a lot of shame is on the family. Oh my god. No, yeah. you's gonna get married. Yeah. <laughs> they gonna squeeze out do out of you. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I, I'm in chapel in Nashville, and the pastor show up. The pastor from the Mount pastor Hall. from Houston, Texas, show up <laughs> at chapel. At chapel, you going you about to get married. <laughs> I don't want to get married. I'm crying. I, no, I don't no, want to get wanna married. Do it. I don't want to do it. Mm. And uh, I canceled it three times. Wow. Mm. I did. I canceled it three times, and then, uh, long story short, you know, that fourth time, you know, I said I do but didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Because Say that one more time for the people in the back. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think just because you say I do, don't think yes. you know what to do. Yes. And I had to learn, and you know, you know, 30 years later, you know, I can preach it like I'm smart, but 20 years ago, I didn't know none of this, that pep talks don't make you ready to fulfill promises. Mm-hmm. And, and just because you make a promise don't mean you can fulfill it. Right. And I think I said I do, but I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And I just think the church have to be more intentional yes. on creating spaces mm-hmm. where we're helping couples with relationship skills. Yeah. Because that's really the issue. It's like, I don't know, how do I communicate? Or mm-hmm. How do I handle conflict? Or how do I become emotionally healthy? And I think we have to do a better job at do you have relationship skills? Yes. And we didn't have that, Mm-mm. and it was rocky. Oh, my God. Let's unpack that. How did that start showing up in the marriage? Mm. What? <laughs> now, go easy, because I, <laughs> I still live in Houston, here in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be all over the world. You know he is everywhere. He, he in Tubuktu and everything. Timbuktu. <laughs> Dear future wife, you're in the woods. No, it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> no, he everywhere. Like... Like he everywhere, like just in the corner. What you watching, dear future? <laughs> um, every everywhere. Yeah. It started showing up in everything in our conversations, in our intimacy toward one another. Um, there was obvious, you know, just no respect. You know, he would spend more time. Uh, at church because by now he's in full-time ministry and so because of all of the confusion with the communication I didn't want to go home he didn't want to go home and I didn't want him to come home because there was peace when he wasn't there that's deep and I was trying to protect my peace but ladies I mean how we gonna do that if you're married to somebody (laughs) like you cannot protect your peace you don't want him to stay away but he wanted to get a ladder you know, it was so much confusion in the communication. He wanted to get a ladder and go to the rooftop of the house, just, yep. you know, not to deal with me. And, and that was rough. And then, of course, now in the bedroom, like, I don't want you to touch me. Yep. Like, sleep on yeah. the yeah. edge of the yep. bed. If you're going to yeah. be in here, get yeah. way over. Give me a lot of space because I don't want you to and touch me. And I wasn't me. built that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just you didn't lock, it lock, it didn't locked up on me. <laughs> yeah. 
on my side here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you weren't built, built that way, Pastor Jay? Yeah, it's locked up. And so I'm like, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and you need to do this, and all that kind of stuff. And the Lord killed me one day. He says, blaming is lame. The blame is lame. He says, your family is where you have led it. Mm. I said, no, 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 Doc. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you're the shepherd. Mm -hmm. Yes. And sheep follow shepherds. And when I acknowledged my unhealthiness, right, which was a, it was a crazy thing. I had to acknowledge, like, something wrong with me. And that right there, you know, that, you know, breakthrough is really hitting the wall. Mm -hmm. But breakthrough is hitting the wall in the same spot. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think a lot of times people, we all over here, but if you just keep hitting that thing, you can get breakthrough. And so I had to admit, like, Something wrong with me, and, and here's the thing, as I became healthier, mm -hmm. everything around me began to bloom. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, yeah I talked about this in the uh, episode that I had with uh, Kev on stage. He mm -hmm. asked me, why don't you cheat on your ex-wife? And uh, <laughs> that video went viral or whatnot. But I remember when I was saying that, I said that I felt like my wife was the enemy. But what I started realizing, the enemy was the inner me. Wow. And I was a broken wow. young boy trying to be a husband mm -hmm. with no manual, with no tools, mm. with still dealing with yeah. uh, father wounds because I never even saw my father be an adequate husband. And so now I'm trying to take a position that wasn't modeled, wow. uh, modeled for me. And so we don't talk enough about that. We don't talk enough about, we don't even have reference. One of the... Thank you, Holy Spirit. One of the main things that they do when you get a, a job in corporate America, they'll have you shadow somebody. And then they'll have you shadow somebody <laughs> oh, and I watch like that, how they do the job or whatnot. They don't just say, here, first day on the job, go do it. Yeah. But that's how marriage is. Yes. Marriage, you'll, just, you'll take these vows. They have you say these very extreme vows, like for better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> richer. For richer or for poor. Yeah. Like no one is thinking about what does poor really look like? Yeah. And, and, and I love what the walker said, like, could we be together, you know, um, in a little one bedroom apartment, you know, eating ramen noodles and, and bologna. I love fried bologna when I was growing up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I digress with a little mustard on it or whatnot. But listen, yeah. we don't never talk about the, the poor part. You know, we all talk about when we hear that our, our ears turn up to richer, yeah. we turn up for better, yeah. you know, health. Yeah. But when I talk to a lot of couples, it's those extremities that breaks the relationship when they deal with issues. I've talked to couples where the spouse has left the other spouse in the hospital while they were going through cancer treatments. Mm. You know, mm. I had a, I had a, a couple, I, well, this lady on this panel I did in Bermuda whose husband left her after she lost her sight. Oh, wow. She went blind, 100% blind with five kids, no job, stay-at-home mom, and the husband said, I couldn't do, I, I can't take it, mm. and left her with five kids, and she never seen him again. And so we take these vows, we yeah. take these vows and not realize them. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we, we. Oh, we, oh, that was yeah. a joke, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like over here, like trying not to laugh at that. She gave I'm it like, away right there. Did he mean that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my I was having a serious moment. She, <laughs> <laughs> she never wow, saw me. Literally. Again. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, that's gonna take me out. <laughs> <laughs> and so the reality is I love that you guys were able to weather through those tough times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so continue unpacking that because there's couples here that me uh may be navigating some of these tough terrains. And I want y'all to be very vulnerable and, and give some very transparent situations and specific situations that y'all navigated through and how y'all overcame it because people need that blueprint that you talked about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You know, and I just like to to share that, you know, as I mentioned, when it started surfacing and we weren't getting along and, you know, just didn't want to be around each other and be together and all these things, the enemy just continued to come in and this invisible wall, yeah. you know, that was built in the relationship. And as a result of that, um, there was just no care of whether or not, you know, his needs were being met. You know, but the thing about it is when it comes to us as beings, 
in relationship, husband and wife, we are responsible for meeting our spouse's needs. Right. And so I was so focused on, you know, taking care of my kids and, you know, just having peace at home. I wasn't worried about, you know, whatever needs he had. But because he's a human being, he's a man, he still has the needs. So Bishop Walker mentioned how affirmation, you know, yeah. men need that. And so he would get it whenever he preached. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that need was being fulfilled for him, you know, when he go out each week and he's preaching and stuff like that, but he wouldn't hear it from me. Right. You know, yeah. he, he should hear it at home and I wasn't providing it at home. And so, of course, there's now there's more division. There's more division and there's more conversation and more of him being poured into the congregation and how he can help people and his needs are being met that way. And then here I am over here with my tank just empty. You know, just not feeling the love. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm like Tyler Perry. I can do bad all by myself. Yeah. Like, if I'm going to be here by myself, I'm just do it by myself. And that's when we started entertaining the idea of divorce. Yeah. It's like, yes, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not going to work because I'm not feeling loved. He's not feeling respected. And it was never supposed to be that way. How serious were y'all about filing for divorce? What? How serious? Pretty serious. Man. Pretty serious. I'm, how serious? <laughs> Who brought I, it up I, first? I left. He did. Oh, you left? I packed up all my clothes and went to my mama house. <laughs> Why we always got to go to our mama house? <laughs> he packed and, up all his clothes and, and our son. son. And I got my son. Yeah. He took his son yeah. with you. All the way back to Missouri City with the white shorts. Um, <laughs> and I get to my mama house mm -hmm. and she say, go back home. So I was gone 24 hours. I've been the there 30 years. Best since. 24 <laughs> hours I had in a long time. Oh my God. No, it was serious. It was serious. Good. And then we get back home. I'm going to Southwestern Theological Seminary. Seminary. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm doing an intensive study for a week. Hallelujah. One week, get away. Yeah. Like, this is, yes, this it was is, great. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm coming home. It's over. I'm coming home, I'm bold, I don't care what the church gonna say, I'm out of here. <laughs> Walks through the door, die. And she say, you know I'm pregnant again. <laughs> like, how is that possible? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so that was a speed bump, and that's when, you know, I really start, I gotta work on me, because I loved her. So she didn't keep you sleeping on the, that far outside the bed too long, then, did she? No, no, because right. remember, <laughs> It's in me, I'ma get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was able to, you know, you know, run game a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Not proud of it. Yeah. But was able to say a couple of things. <laughs> get her back on over to that side. Yeah. yeah. But but no, we we it was serious. Yeah, it was serious. It, it was serious and man, we just we found the answer for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we found the answer, and here's the thing. The Lord said, Doc, you don't keep pain in a bucket, you apply it. Mm -hmm. And we were going to church, like, I'm pastoring three, four services. I mean, it's crazy. We like the only hamburger young adult stand in Houston. Yeah. We was the only church. Like, it's so many people. I mean, it was unbelievable. And uh, I'm like Kobe. I'm like superstar. All that. Yeah. I told her. Yeah, he told me. I said, girl, I'm Kobe out here. <laughs> Just pride for NG. Really Just pride. We were in Vegas. <laughs> I'm Kobe out here. And you won't meet my needs, none of that kind of stuff. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was tough. <laughs> Here's the thing about pride. I'm blessed up. She talk, we talked about that. This did. is me. Yeah. Like Satan is prideful. Yes, he is. A am I right about it? Yeah, 100. And here's the thing. Because he's prideful, He'll never get out of hell. Yeah. Here's why. It takes humility to get out of pride. Yes. And even though in that moment I was prideful, mm -hmm. I brought humility in. And humility is when you like, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. to the Lord and to her. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and what I began to do, what really helped Doc was just naked. You know, the Bible said Adam, he was naked. Yep. And not yep. ashamed, not which ashamed. is... Everything, the stretch marks, everything was exposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And God gave me this principle. He says, people trust transparency. Yeah. 
Yes. And where there is no trust, you don't have a relationship. Right. It's just an arrangement. Mm -hmm. And she would always tell me, man, you got to be open and loving. Mm -hmm. And that right there began to set the course of confidence, you know, in her husband. Mm -hmm. How did you transform your ear to start hearing her again? Because what happens when, and, and vice versa, because when you start building up resentment towards one another, you don't want to hear nothing nobody says. So how did you open up your heart, your mind, and your ear to start hearing the voice of your wife and start hearing the voice of your husband again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's simple. You know, it's kind of like uh, credit. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got 400, 500 credit score, well, credit is connected to credibility. Mm -hmm. You ain't paying your bills. Yeah. It ain't got quiet in here. <laughs> <laughs> you done bought the car, they calling you, he ain't here. Yeah. He here. Yeah, yeah. He here. You move your... so, <laughs> so my beacon score was low. Yes. And the Lord had to teach me that the best way to restore honor is trust. Mm -hmm. And trust is this, doing what you say yes. well. Yes. Because just because you do what you say don't mean you a person of character and trust. But I began to it, be where I say I was going to be. Yeah. Do what I say I was going to do. Right? And we, we used to have a lot of attention. It was so many people at the church, that kind of thing. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm ministering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes sisters would come to me to be ministered to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she'd be like, she need to get up out your face. <laughs> That's what she would say. I said, I'm, 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 I'm work, I work for Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't No, this was a big up. issue right here, Doc. Yeah. Yeah, because they, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, serve. And, and she was like, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. And she yeah, would get yeah. with me with that. Yeah, I would get with him because there's, there's a respectful way that you can do that, right? And so, I mean, when you're married... And, and hopefully, you know, just the single ladies in the room, when, when you're a single woman and you are communicating with a married man, you have to do it respectfully. And the primary way you do it respectfully is you respect yeah. his wife. Teach. You cannot, you cannot have a relationship with the husband and yeah. not have a relationship. Yes. That's such a huge flag. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's the biggest flag. We yeah. as wives, like our antennas go way up yeah. when there's a single woman, but you don't have anything to say to me. You look at me crazy, but you're all in my husband's face. Like that don't work. It Talk don't work about like it. That. You know, so Talk about it. I think, you know, just for us, and then, you know, he's talking about, you know, what he had to do. I had to do, it wasn't all on him. Like I had responsibility as well when it came to respecting him. And I grew up in a household of very strong independent women. Mm -hmm. And the women ran it, ran businesses, ran the homes, like was doing real estate, you know, just all these were, things. Were, were men present at home? Men were present, but they were quiet and they just let the women do it. But my husband not wired like that. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. that didn't work, you know? And so the first thing, I remember very first conversation we had when we kind of had our little first spat, he said, you're not gonna talk to me like that? Yep. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like this is how women in my family talk. <laughs> yeah. And he said, my mother don't talk to me like that. Talk about it. So you're not gonna talk to me like that. And I yeah. was like, okay. Let me take note of that. <laughs> Don't say that. You know? Just a Christian thug. I'm a Christian thug. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, you know, I had to learn over time, you know, that timing was important. My right. tone, how I communicate was important. I had to be tactful. Like, when I communicate, like, I can't be amongst the congregation talking to the pastor crazy. You yeah. know? So I had to learn all those things. And. I, I thank God for Dr. Lois Evans, who's gone to be with the Lord, yes. but she had a ministry, and she wrote a book, Seasons of a Woman's Life, and that really touched me, and it helped me mature, you know, one, as a woman of God, because when we got together, I was still trying to figure out who I was, because I was young, yeah. you know, and immature. So the frontal I, lobe had yet to be developed. <laughs> that's right, the yeah. frontal lobe. <laughs> it, so it, frontal lobes are developed around 21 to 23 years old, yeah. and so that's a real thing. That's a real thing. And so eventually, you know, I got to the place where, you know, I began to respect him more, you know, began to show him affection more. And what was really huge, because 
in our relationship, the Christian thug in him, you know, would come at me a lot. Yeah. But he gave me the nickname Velvet Steel. And I think it's so appropriate because most mm. people see me and they're like, oh, you know, Lady J, she's yeah. like all oh, mild and calm. That's the velvet. Yeah. <laughs> Still side. <laughs> I'm from Studiewood, y'all. Like, <laughs> I'm from the hood. Yeah. And I, I know without a shadow of a doubt over time as I've grown and matured, I'm like, whatever he go through, because we on the same team, like, if we got to go fight, we fighting together. Yeah. Like, I'm not about to let you fight by yourself. I'm fighting with you, yeah. you know. But as I grew and matured in the Lord, I came to discover it was very important for me that his heart safely trust me. And I had to get to a place where I wanted my husband to know I'm not just with my mouth saying I'm for you. Like, I want you to know I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you. And as Proverbs says, his heart, her husband's heart safely trusts her. Yeah, he has yeah. full confidence. Yeah. He has no lack of gain. When my husband look at me, I want him to know he don't lack nothing when it comes to his wife. Come on. So whatever I need to be for whatever him. Whatever she need to be. I'm, I'm doing that. I'm why, doing why, 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 hold on, hold on, <laughs> uh, Pastor Jay, why you repeat that? <laughs> why you repeat Never. whatever she needs to be, Pastor Jay? <laughs> Whatever, skill. Whatever, yeah. Because, you know, you know, the songs of Solomon, the Shulamite woman, uh -huh. and you know, they got the garden. Uh -huh. The Bible says that she had the garden locked up. Yeah. But in that garden, it was, so, it was a lot of fruit. Uh -huh. Pomegranate fruit. Uh -huh. Apples. Apples in there, cinnamon. Uh -huh. To me, that, that's, 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 you don't know what you're gonna get that night. <laughs> Tonight may be a cinnamon night. <laughs> I don't know. And I just think, you know, that really helped us because we grew up in a church and it was First Lady yeah. and it was Hat and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And I don't want that. Yeah. I want to see fig leaves. Do I have a witness in here? I need to see something. I just told my connect group, no, 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 no. We come home, you're in the house, kids go to bed. We, I want to see, walk in the shorts. Yeah, the white shorts. I want to see the shorts. Do yeah. I have a witness in there? That's what we want to see, the shorts. I want to see the, I want, can I get a witness, brother? I want to see, I don't want to see the shorts. I don't want to see the, the non-dress. No, we want, like, like, the only way that a man's sexual needs can be met legitimately is a spouse. Period. Legitimately. Legitimately, yeah. so not masturbation, right? And that's a big thing. I don't know if yeah. you can say this on here. Oh, we talk, we, we talk, we talk, we talk. <laughs> you can't do masturbation. Yeah. yeah. Tell me why. Cause you're lusting. Yeah. It's lust, mm -hmm. so you can't you can't do the masturbation. Uh, you can't do pornography. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can't do the pornography. You know that kind of thing. Uh, the wife. Yeah. God is awesome. Yes, he is. And he thought of the man yes, and the woman. And here's the thing. Like I told, you know, the, the church we just had Super Bowl. Usher performed. Mm -hmm. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. But he prepared, and this is for the brothers, he prepared all year in seven days mm -hmm. for a 15-minute performance. Yep. You can't get a Super Bowl experience if you ain't working during, these, during the week. You gotta prepare. And, 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 and I had to learn that she need me to be affectionate to her. That's right. And I begin to compliment her mm -hmm. and uh, manage that Christian thug. Yeah. And be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and let me just say this. You know, the Lord had to teach me. Practice what you preach. Mm -hmm. Right? Now that's big. That's real big. Then he flipped it on me. He says, no, preach what you practice. <laughs> because here's the thing. When you practice what you preach, you ain't got it yet. Yeah. But when you preach what you practice, it, yes. gives, it gives people more confidence. Yes. And what we're doing, we're practicing what we're preaching versus, no, preach what you practice. Yeah. And when I begin to do that in private, Man, it built trust. My, my, my beacon score went up. Yes. yes. So I'm 800 and I died. 
I'm 800 now. Come on. You know, you can make good purchases when the Brickham's Coke. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to tell you. Uh, this would be very applicable for those that haven't heard me share this story on my podcast. I talk about the feather story. When I was married, I used to complain that my wife didn't have sex often. We would have sex first year of marriage once every about 12 days. And I was like, this is terrible. This is, this is, this is punishment. I feel like I'm in a penitentiary or something. <laughs> wow. And, and one day she came home with a feather. And she was like, here, use this. I said, oh, God, here's another obstacle to overcome, you know. And she gave me the feather, and I'm just rubbing on her body, you know, haphazardly, you know, begrudgingly. I'm just rubbing on her body. And it took me literally, I was divorced five years before I got an epiphany of what she was telling me mm. in that feather. She said, Terrace, when we're trying to have well, when we're trying to make love in her ideology, I'm just trying to have sex. Yeah. And she wanted me to be as gentle as a feather uh -huh. when I rubbed her body. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to go ahead and get my orgasm on and yeah. be done. And so when she gave me the feather, she was saying, be gentle with me. Yes. Take your time with me. Make love to me. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that as if it was another obstacle that I had to overcome. And she was just being difficult or whatnot. And then God began to break my heart. Five years after marriage, mind you, five years after marriage, I looked back and I was like, I was so selfish in that experience. And so oftentimes as men, we're complaining that our women aren't being sexual with us, but we're not creating the safety, the, 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 the beautiful experience of that woman to say, listen, I want to honor your body in this experience. I want to make sure that you get yours while I'm trying to get mine. You know, at the end of the day, while we're in this experience together, we got to make sure that we are in this experience wow. together, yes. together. Wow. And so that's what's so beautiful about it. And I love that y'all navigated that space of having having that, that tension where you were sleeping on one side of the bed. She said, I don't want you touching me or whatnot, which as men, we don't deal with rejection well at all. You know, and we're like, you don't want to touch me? Well, I know about five, five right. other women that would love right. me to touch them right now. <laughs> you know, so that's the reality. And our ego will step out. And I learned a long time ago that ego is the acronym for edging God out. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, when our ego set in, we start stepping outside of who God called us to be, and we're not covering our queens properly. And then when we get really to the root of it, which is a course I'm going to drop next month, well, in, in April, is that we find out that one in five women have been victims of sexual assault. So even yeah. we, we may be triggering our women in ways that we don't even know that we're triggering them because we're not being gentle with their heart. We're not being safe with them. And so as men, I encourage us to create safe spaces for our women. And I mean safety from a spiritual standpoint, because there's a lot of spiritual abuse, safety from a physical yes. standpoint, yeah, and man. safety from an emotional standpoint. Yeah. And so that's what I love the fact that y'all have created the Answer Conference, because we're providing some real answers today. Bless you, man. Some real answers today. So as we wrap up, I want y'all both to tell me why y'all stayed married? Mm. Well, I'll start. I wanted to stay married because one, I knew growing up that my mother and my father never married. Um, I grew up in the home with my dad, not with my mom, and I did not want that for my family. Um, we had four kids, and it was very important for me to make certain that my home reflected what God designed when it came to marriage. And I don't, I believe, you know, God, when he joins two people together, like the scripture says, let no man put asunder. Like nobody is supposed to come between what God has joined together. And I right. believed when I stood at the altar and I said, I do, that it was God who was bringing us together because he checked pretty much all the boxes on the list. And so I wanted to make certain that I wasn't selfishly thinking of just what I desired. I was also thinking about my children. And I wanted to be committed to do what it took as far as God's word to be the wife I needed to be for my husband. I wasn't just doing it so that we can, you know, portray a happy family. No, I wanted to live and be an example of what God meant when he brought a man and a woman together to have a family. Yeah. That's good, yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. Pastor I think, Jay. I think, yeah, that's great. You know, definitely, you know, the model of the family, you know, uh, all of that. But I think just really, man, God just gave me a grace mm -hmm. to endure. 
You know what I'm saying? I think people like love each other. People go through divorces. They love each other. It just, you know, we hit one of them moments. It was, it was a tough season. Uh, but God is a God of grace. And he graced us with a strength mm -hmm. um, to get through it, you know. And uh, that's why people who have gone through divorce, you know, my thing is not to judge them into change, but love into transformation. Mm -hmm. like, like God is a God of another chance, right? And, yeah, we made it, uh, but it's a lot of things we done that was a sin. Mm -hmm. So I think because of my relationship with Christ and purpose, we want to be a model for the generation. It's hard yeah. to remodel without a model. Yes. And, and, and we want to be a model to let singles, to let men and couples know uh, you can get through it. Mm -hmm. You can get through it. And, and we're going to challenge you. We're not going to condemn you to hell, but we're going to challenge you. And that's what the Answer Conference is really all about. When we start applying what Jesus said yeah. by faith, yes. it changed. Mm -hmm. And it didn't change the institution of marriage, it changed the individuals. Yes. Because there's nothing wrong with the institution. Mm -hmm. It's just the church need to do a better job, Bixie, of saying, let's create intentional spaces. Yes. Where we are really serving singles, where we are really serving those who are about to merge, where we're really serving those in crisis, and where we're really helping marriages that's kind of rusty get that groove back mm -hmm. and if we can be more intentional on that I believe that we're going to create stronger families let me ask you this real quick when you look back over your life could you have arrived at this place in your life be it financial be it building the body of Christ without her who <laughs> without lady J could you have achieved all that you've achieved without her no, I, th I think, you know, the Lord didn't give Adam a rack of ribs. He gave him one rib. And I believe that he's teaching a principle that Eve is an essential collaborator. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I think there's a value that she brings to the table that yes. I don't have. Mm -hmm. Early on in the marriage, I underutilized my essential collaborator because of insecurity. I've been able to accomplish so much more. There you go, babe. <laughs> so much more because I'm in partnership mm -hmm. with somebody who's not impotent. Now you'll catch that when you get home. Mm -hmm. Because the assignment is to multiply. That's right. But in order to multiply, you got to be connected to someone who is healthy. And so I've been able to bear fruit, and we've been able children and grandkids and church, and she getting ready to launch a business, and we got peace. Yeah. Yeah, and we got joy. So, uh, no, she's my favor. There it is. Love there it is. And that's why I reframed husband and wife to be purpose partners. When you get with mm. your purpose partner, you're able to fulfill purpose together yeah. and you're able to do great exploits. You know, as individuals, the Bible says that one can chase away a thousand, but two can set 10,000 demons on, man. to flight. Yeah. That means that the power that comes through covenant and unity yeah. can yes. do five times. The number five represents grace and God puts his grace over that relationship yes. to do great exploits. And so I I love uh, your explanation about the essential added component mm -hmm. that uh, Lady J brings to your life. Y'all have a book that y'all written, right? Yeah. And uh, let, let's talk about that real quick as we wrap up. Yeah, yeah. The answer, the answer book, and uh, pretty much it comes from our story, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the Lord gave me a picture from when Jesus gets out of the grave. Remember that? Yeah. You remember that? In my, that's in the Bible. <laughs> and so he gets out of the grave. The terriers, and he goes into this the room where the disciples are, mm -hmm. and the Bible says that Thomas, mm -hmm. when they told him, did not believe. Mm -hmm. The next day, Jesus comes and he shows Thomas his scars, mm -hmm. and when Thomas sees the scars, he moves from doubt to belief. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me, He says, 
when you have a scar, you've been healed. Mm -hmm. He says, if God have healed your marriage and you just got scars, mm -hmm. then you got to share that. Because people are saved when you share your scars. Yes. And so we stop pretending to act like, oh, we ain't never been through nothing. Right. But we start sharing our scars mm -hmm. so that people can move from doubt. To belief. To belief. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Listen, make sure y'all pick up that book. Yes. Uh, absolutely amazing. Um, I want y'all to start, are y'all going to start traveling around and start sharing y'all story and start doing speaking engagements like that as a couple? Y'all see yeah. that on the horizon? You're going to invite us? We're going to come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to yeah. come. Yes, I love, man. I love what y'all doing, and I wow. said that more people need to be transparent, especially as leaders or whatnot. Did y'all enjoy this, y'all? <laughs> Listen. Can I say this, man? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Man, you are a re refreshing to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, can we give him a hand? Like, thank you for what you're doing. Just a conversation. God has raised you up for such a time as this. And yes. the best is yet to come. And in two buck two, they're going to be watching. Dear <laughs> Wife, come on, man. <laughs> Listen, y'all okay. give it up for my homies, Pastor <laughs> Jay and Lady Jay, y'all. Ladarian, thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. 
This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTaris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.